everybody and welcome back to Global LPG Conversations. My name is David Appleton. I'm Vice President of Argus Media. Um, and today in this episode, I am joined by our lead analyst in Shanghai, Celia Chen. Hello, Celia. Hello, David. How are you today? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Sunshine in Shanghai, but people are waiting, you know, for the infections mm -hmm. when the COVID, uh, almost COVID restrictions, almost all were removed. That's okay. good news. That's, yeah. that's one of the things we're going to talk a little bit about, particularly with regard to the impact on the LPG and the petrochemicals uh, business. Um, so we'll get straight into it here. Um, obviously, it's been a challenging year for Chinese petrochemicals. Let's, uh, let's be clear on that. Can you just give us the latest about what you're hearing from the market? Yeah. Actually, this, uh, this year is very tough, you know, for those pH plants. Um, this year, they are facing very high propane prices, and also it's uh, very volatile. That means it's unpredictable for them to make their plan for the next month. Yeah, it, you know, one of my uh, clients uh, based in East China, he said that, uh, you know, when they are facing such volatile market and also the weak demand, especially the negative margin, what they can do is to choose uh, shut down at the right time uh, in order to avoid huge losses this year. And they already shut down for three times. Yeah, that's a very uh, tough thing for them to do. Yeah. And for the downstream, you know, the downstream buyers, you know, the major downstream is the polyethylene uh, and the poly, uh, po uh, polyethylene. And it's a kind of uh, feedstock for the plastics. And the downstream converters, uh, what they are uh, doing this year, they prefer not to sign, you know, the term supply contract. They are preferring to buying from spot market because they this can get more discount, especially when there's new sellers to come. So that's even challenging for the Inter very interesting. Yeah. And then what about on the on the PDH side? Yeah, that that's for for the PDH mm. side. It means okay, that yeah. their downstream side, their downstream uh, buyers, are uh, uh, they are no hurry to buy, because sure. they 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 know there's mm. more than sufficient supply. Yeah, so the price cannot go up in line with you know the feedstock propane. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned the COVID nineteen restrictions. What's uh, could you expand a little bit on the impact on the business that has has had? Uh, yeah, actually, this uh, year they uh, experienced uh, two waves of uh, the COVID impact. The one is uh, in the second quarter when Shanghai was fully locked. The downstream demand was really slow at that time. Uh, another wave is uh, uh, was in October and December. Uh, sorry, October and November when there's a resurgence of COVID infections all over China. So at these two periods, the downstream, yeah, it's uh, really slowed slowed down because those uh, manufacturers, they are, their logistics was infected and uh, the ending demand also very slow. And also they even hard to, they are also very hard to find export opportunities. So uh, what they do, uh, they has to close their business maybe and now it's uh, yeah, it's uh, um, the restrictions was removed uh, one week earlier. But what I heard from the downstream marketing now is because it's close to the year end. Is the traditional Chinese Spring Festival is also uh, coming soon. So they because they are lack still lack of new orders. Uh, so I they see. may yeah. So the demand recovery was at this moment was still uncertain. Okay, yeah, that's a, a really important point. Actually, that's kind of leads into my next question. Obviously, we've seen Chinese imports have not risen in 2022 versus 2021 because of those lower operating rates you mentioned. And it's interesting to note that even with the change in restrictions, you are saying that we're not going to see a big change immediately. What are your thoughts on that? Bit going into 2023 more broadly and a bit bit further along the, the line. Yeah, 
this year, actually, in the first 10 months, so when we look at those China customs data, we saw that uh, Chinese LPG import has increased 6% this year. Uh, so the whole year might be 5 to 6% growth. It's much slower than last year and also slower uh, than the market uh, than uh, market uh, expectations. But of course, the pH sector, the petrochemical sector was still the major driver of the import growth this year. Uh, according to our August data, the Chinese pH um, production this year had a 13 percent growth. Um, so, of course, their average operation rate had more than 10 percent drop, but the total capacity, I think it uh, had a uh, 30 to 40 percent increase instead. So that's uh, the total capacity increased, the average operation rate dropped, but the total demand for propane still uh, increased. Yeah. But yeah, uh, for next year, that's also very challenging because they're, uh, according to our um, knowledge, there are still over 10 new projects, new PDH projects are going to come next year. So it means the capacity expansion was still there and uh, the demand may be still not, you know, cannot be as uh, strong as what happened maybe two years ago. So that's uh, still means the average operation rate of pH plants may drop further. Yeah, OK, next year. so we're looking at 10 to 12 new pH plants to come yeah. and then just so so just to, in terms of purely the numbers that's how much new propylene capacity is that in the next two to three years yeah that's uh i think uh beyond this uh 10 or 12 new ph there's uh still three new steam crackers okay, are going yeah, to well. start up that so that the total propylene capacity will be more than that okay i understand um, so that's the petrochemical side, just and then also on on the energy side as well. Um, uh, what has been the situation with that and, and thoughts on that? Yeah, for the energy side, actually this year it's uh, petrochemical side is still in a uh, uh, two digits growth, but the petrochemical uh, the energy side, uh, what I uh, observed, they had a sharp drop actually this year. Um, uh, take, you know, Guangdong province, for example, it's a demand center for uh, energy use of LPG. There, the total import uh, in this pr province has dropped uh, close to one fourth this year. I think that's uh, um, one of the reason is, of course, the lockdown caused some, you know, the restaurants has uh, uh, closed people cannot eat in the restaurants and that's the commercial demand is uh, has been dropped and also uh, another reason is the uh, supply increase from domestic side the the largest uh, refinery based in uh, Zhejiang it's uh, Zhejiang Rongsheng also known as uh, ZPC they supplied over 10 uh, over 100,000 ton LPG in the commercial market every month from May uh, because, you know, in China, uh, this refinery, they got coal for their power generation instead of LPG. So they can free those LPG into the spot market. Oh, very yeah. interesting. And actually, um, that's uh, talking about substitution of energies. That's been really a hot topic yeah. uh, around the world and actually globally in in. in just a note here in Europe, uh, something we've covered extensively uh, over the past few months is the fact that we have had high natural gas prices, um, which has led to, in the case of refineries, to burn LPG instead of natural gas because the, the economics of doing that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm wondering if you've seen anything related to this uh, in China in terms of the high natural gas prices and how that's interplayed with LPG. Yeah, actually, this year, high natural gas prices do have some impact in China energy market. But I think it's uh, quite different from what happened in Europe. 
Uh, China is uh, rich in coal, actually. So from if if talk about the uh, energy cost uh, ranking from high to low, it should be natural gas is the highest, and then LPG, and then coal, all power. Because in China, 70% of the power, uh, the power was come from coal. So that means um, what I heard from a client, uh, they said, you know, in, in some places, uh, use electric cooker, even cheaper than uh, burning LPG. So the substitution was um, mainly from, uh, mainly is coal or electric cooker to LPG. So what this is what the residential uh, sector happened in China. Yeah, and the, from the re, uh, talk about refineries, uh, yes, m many refineries, they, uh, bur they used to burn LNG. Uh, some of the refineries burn LNG for their power and heat, heat uh, for their power and heating. But this year, uh, what I heard is uh, many of them, they already signed, you know, long-term supply contract. So uh, those part of the uh, natural gas, the price was still okay, but if they have additional demand, they need to be covered by their own produced LPG. Yeah, but this, this uh, volume is not big enough to influence the total situation in China here. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, the, basically the, the local refinery availability has not been negatively impacted in the same way as it has in Europe, where this yeah. has obviously been a big challenge. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Celia, for that, that overview. Um, I'm sure that our listeners will find a lot of that very, very interesting. Um, if anybody yeah. has any follow-up questions, then please do get in touch with us. Um, there's uh, numerous ways you can do that on via the podcast um, and or through through Argus Media. So uh, do send any questions you have to myself or Celia and we'll be happy to answer those. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. I think this is possibly our last podcast of 2023. Um, so you've rounded the year off for us, Celia. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, David. And yeah. uh, we look forward to doing some more of these in, um, in 2023. We'll see you again. So and, and Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye.